I have made a career out of biting off more than I can chew, but this time I really, really bit off way more <laughs> than I can chew. <laughs> and so I have here about $5,000 of raw aircraft grade lumber and over the next, I don't know how long, I'm gonna turn it into an airplane shape and then hopefully I'm gonna fly the airplane shaped object, which I think makes it an airplane. So this is day one of Xyla's Pete and Pole Air Camper build. No kit, just some drawings from 1928 and me and a whole bunch of really expensive lumber. These boards are Sitka spruce and honestly it might have been cheaper for me to go to Sitka, Alaska and cut the tree down myself. <laughs> and this theoretically is all the wood it'll take me to build an airworthy two-seat error aircraft plus a little bit of glue and a whole lot of time. And probably a lot of patience and a lot of swearing. Ever since I was a very little girl, the only thing I've ever truly known about, about myself, myself was that, that I, I wanted, wanted to fly. fly. I used my very first YouTube check to buy my beloved 1946 Cessna 140. But my dream with this channel has always been to build an airplane, not from a kit, but from raw lumber, the way that they did 100 years ago, when aviation was so much more accessible to the common person and rooted in the joyful spirit of human adventure. I am so humbled and grateful to say that I can finally make this dream come true, thanks to an award from the Independent Media Initiative and the Sloan Foundation. IMI is a nonprofit that supports creators making media that is thoughtful, authentic, and educational. And the Sloan Foundation strives to enhance public understanding of science and technology in the modern world. Together, they champion creators with awards that give them the freedom to do something new, different, and bold. Something that makes a difference to you, the viewer, and makes your life better for it. These days, the social media landscape is dominated by content made for easy clicks, designed to be forgotten about after you scroll away. But I became an engineering creator because I wanted to make things that matter, and I hope that the passion and the love that I have for this project sticks with you long after you've clicked away, and maybe even inspires you to start that blue sky project in your life that's felt too daunting to tackle. So thank you so, so much, and I hope I make you all cry. These are the official plans from the Pete and Pole family for the 1929 design of the Pete and Pole Air Camper. I'm a little bit scared because I'm used to like CAD and they've mailed me a roll of paper. So wish me luck. This is going to challenge me in a whole new way. I feel like it's, it's not building this airplane that's gonna get me, it's like learning to read old school drawings and plans. Or it's gonna be opening the tube. We don't need to show all of this struggle, do we? Oh, heck yeah. Oh my gosh. Really dramatically unrolled them upside down. Let me try that again. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're going to school on this one. Ah, oh, this is so cool. I feel like I have to flatten these out before I can read them. Oh my God, there's like, someone edited things in ballpoint pen. This is truly, like I just went onto the Pete and Pole family website and they just still sell great grandpa, whatever generations ago, Pete and Pole's original plans. Okay, so I placed an order with Aircraft Spruce for all of the lumber for this project months ago but it just hasn't arrived yet. So I found a supplier in Berkeley, California, which is like just north of San Francisco, and they have like 500 board feet of Sitka spruce in stock. I kind of spent all day yesterday waffling on whether or not I should do it, and today I was like, screw it. I need, I need to get moving on this project. Yeah, driving six hours for lumber, and then I'll drive six hours back. My parents actually moved out to Northern California, so I'll stay with them for tonight buy my wood in the morning, and then drive back to LA tomorrow. Okay, so quick inventory before I actually head to San Francisco and buy wood. I'm gonna need about 100 board feet of... Ah! <gasps> what, who are you? I'm you from the future. I'm here to prevent you from ending up like me. What happened to you? Or I guess I should say me. You know how you and your team use Notion, the all-in-one productivity software to stay connected and manage your production workflow every day? Yeah, it's been a lifesaver for keeping track of our deadlines, acting as a central hub for all of our important documents and helping to manage all of our project timelines. What are you Listen to me, in one hour, 
you're gonna go into the office and you're gonna decline the new Notion update. And that means you're gonna miss all of Notion AI. Your project timeline spirals. As a result, everything gets super disconnected. And as a result, your next rocket project goes terribly wrong. What? What do you mean? You miscalculate the trajectory and launch it into the moon, killing us all. No, no, I meant with Notion AI. The improvements are insane. It keeps up with your discussions and knows every project update. Like, it can even remember Google Slides. It's like an AI chatbot, universal search engine, and writing assistant all in one spot to save you time and cost. Universal search engine? I don't know. So many of these search engines share your data, not Notion AI. It'll never share your personal data for AI training purposes. That's insane. I know, right? If you want to take your project management to the next level, get started with Notion AI via the link below. Huge thanks to our friends over at Notion for sponsoring this video and saving my butt on production. Good morning from San Francisco. My parents have decided to join me in going to McBeath Hardware because they've never picked out wood before, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have a family field trip to McBeath. <laughs> It was actually very cute. My parents are not makers, and so they have never been wood shopping before, and they were so excited. They were like, can we follow you? It was like, follow your daughter to work day. So shouts out camera woman, Mama Foxland, for all of the filming at Macbeth Hardwood. <laughs> and at $24 a board foot, we are not messing around. I would have loved to buy like one piece at a time and bring it back down, but six hours each way, I had to buy all of it at once. And I don't know what I was thinking, I don't know what my visualization of 100 board feet looked like, um, but for some reason, I drove to San Francisco thinking I could drive it back on the roof of my RAV4. And so this here is an under-dramatization of the next three hours in which I was trying to figure out how to get the longest, straightest, cleanest wood I have ever encountered that was like 150 pounds greater than the limit of my roof rack back to LA. So I could rent a truck and then I could rent a trailer to tow my vehicle here. Let, no. me, let me send you a photograph where I'm lying on top of it. Here, hang on. <laughs> So after a long conversation with U-Haul where they said I could rent a 12 foot closed trailer one way and just leave it sticking out the back with the door rolled up a little bit, I bought like $2,500 worth of wood and then headed to U-Haul. As much as I hate to admit it, I kind of live for this kind of thing, like the little bit poorly planned missions that seem insane. I had a bad feeling when I left for San Francisco. I was like, I didn't, I didn't think this all the way through. Something's gonna happen. And then I convinced myself that it was a good idea anyway. And uh, here we are. So I yeehawed to the closest U-Haul and I got to the 12 foot trailer only to realize that the trailer has barn doors at the back, not a rolling door. And I can't have my wood sticking out the back and the barn door is like flapping around. There was, there was just no good way. Okay, so massive unsuccess with the trailer situation. I put it on U-Ship, which is actually the same, like it's like Uber for big objects. I used it to ship the sailboat that I built up to Seattle. And I've gotten one tentative offer that is cheaper than it would cost me to like rent a box truck and go back. So hopefully he could do it or I'll get another couple offers overnight. It is now like 6.30, so I'm gonna stay another night in San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, the moral of the story is to think things through a little bit more and don't decide 30 minutes before you leave to drive six hours for wood that you're gonna do that and like uh, have a plan in place. And also you can't put 16 foot boards on a RAV4. Lots of good lessons to be learned here. <laughs> So I spent another night at my parents' house and drove back to Macbeth in the morning. I just got to Macbeth. Found out yesterday it's called Macbeth, not Macbeth. Last night I managed to get a really, like a $200 freight shipping quote. So I'm gonna drop off the like freight shipping paperwork that they have to give and like try to sort that out here. And I think I'm gonna go fun wood shopping because like we don't have a store like this in LA and I didn't get a chance to do that yesterday and I really wanted to. So, and I'm gonna grab the small piece of spruce that I picked out and then I'm gonna drive back down to LA. That's the plan. And hallelujah, the freight shipper pulled through. My weird long pallet of wood arrived. I heard you were looking for some airplane wood. Well, the wood made it and I'm only $240 poorer as a result. Not bad, time to build an airplane. But wait, there's more. I, I need more wood. So this is my friend Brian, and we're in my friend Simone's friend Trevor's van. Uh, and we are last minute driving to Aircraft Spruce because I need to pick up plywood and uh, my truck plans fell through because Chris tore his ACL. Very rude of him. Don't need it. 
Don't eat it. Baby. Except that we left at the absolute worst time of day, so we're gonna sit two hours of rush hour traffic, but. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're, ha we're having a blast. We're getting there. I can't believe we're about to go to Aircraft Spruce headquarters itself. I, can I also can't believe I've never been. It's just their shipping is so fast. I never needed to like physically go. Yeah, never had to be the ship, the shipper. Always the shippy, never the shipper. Always the ship. Wait, can I turn my camera around? Oh no, I'm too stupid for this. Aircraft Spruce. Look at it go. Wait, you just drove past it. I just drove past it. Why did you drive past it? I think I thought it was a little bit further down than it was. <laughs> Why don't we just kind of freaking blow right past Aircraft Spruce? <laughs> we flew all the yeah. way here. What? And you just blow white past it. Yeah, what do we freaking drop the ball? The aviation superstore for all your aircraft and pilot needs, except spruce, ironically. Do you know how hard it is to get spruce from aircraft spruce? Wait. I put a rivet in that airplane. The Zenith One Week Wonder in 2014, that's so funny. Wait, didn't that have a rivet fail? <laughs> and then once I was a whole, a whole lot poorer, we loaded up the van to head back to LA. And this is what two and a half thousand dollars of aircraft grade plywood looks like. It is all of five and a half sheets. Two and a half thousand dollars. And then back at the ranch, Brian graciously offered to help me hand delicately carry my plywood that is probably secretly made out of solid gold into the shop so that it wouldn't get any dings or dents. And then I forgot to plug my mic in, but this is probably me complaining about how much this would cost if I'm gonna be completely honest. Oh, this was smart of me. Let me put all my chisels right in front of the outlet. Oh, I don't want to plug this in yet. I'm gonna change the light. Ha! More things to procrastinate to this. I bought this brandy new thin rip cut blade, so I have no excuses for messing it up. I'm sure I'll I'll come up with an excuse once I mess it up, but I did get a new blade for for exactly this purpose. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready! When you put the last strip of a cedar strip canoe in, it's called the whiskey plank. And then afterwards, you get to do a shot of whiskey off of the boat. There's not something for like a first cut. I don't get to do like a shot of aviation gin or something. I guess this is like the first real cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rip it down one inch and then I'll get and rip that in half and get two one by one pieces. See how it goes. missed the first cut. Uh, I was just doing my flyby. Oh my God, my, your flybys are my favorite. This is my friend, mentor, and former neighbor, Steve. He's a retired professional woodworker, and one day he was just walking his dog down the alley where my old shop was while I was working, and he stopped to say hello, and has been a fountain of knowledge and help ever since. Do you want the bigger, do you want that blade? He texted me the day before this to see if I'd be around this afternoon for a, a quick drop by, and I said yes, and I will also need some help ripping down the most expensive 16 foot boards I have ever owned if you are down and available. And I was very lucky that he said yes. It's 
six and three sixteenths. Yeah, six. This was kind of a challenge for a multitude of reasons. One being that these boards were really heavy. Another being that the, these boards were really long. Another being that these boards were intimidatingly expensive. Uh, and another being that my table saw is only 1.75 horsepower. And so this was really maxing it out. So there was like one speed that we could do this at. We did okay? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Steve approved. That's a good space now. Maybe an eighth? Mm hmm Maybe? Yeah. Too much. No, that's okay. And then curve. So three and three uh three and a quarter. Five sixteenths. Alright, so I was looking at this piece that we just cut and it's got a couple tiny little imperfections in the grain and that's enough to make it not airworthy. So we get one longer on out of this part, but we're not gonna get a second one out of this out of this board. So we're setting up to do a third cut and it'll be the same thing where it's got these little imperfections on the bottom, but I'll get a clean inch out of that top. And the bottom one, I can use the area in between all of those for shorter pieces, but not for these 14 foot long ones. Okay, so while Steve is still here, I decided to rip, Steve is still here. <laughs> I decided to rip one more one inch piece. Uh, worst case scenario, I just rip it down into all of the other pieces I need. The other scenario is that one of these doesn't work for the long run and I need to rip one down and Steve isn't here. So, Steve's the best. All right, let's do the Van Moor. So we have ripped one of these huge boards into one inch strips like this, um, but there are issues like you can see at the end of this board, there's a giant knot. So this one we've actually put aside, we're not gonna use that at all for a long run because we need to find 15 foot one by one inch lengths that are perfect. So this one has a really good one on this side, but there's a knot on that side, so we can't use it. Okay, that was so obscenely helpful. I have been stressing out on how I was gonna rip these boards down and I was like, it needs to be a two-person job and the other person needs to be a skilled woodworker. And Steve just showed up at my house on the day that I needed him. Ugh, the best. So Steve used to live down the alley from me at my very first place in LA and he would just like pop in when I was working and give me advice. So a huge amount of what I know is actually from Steve. That was the most I think I've ever put him to work. <laughs> uh. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. What, you wanted more than one cut of wood? Did you see how long it took me just to acquire that wood? I didn't have time. I was busy driving all over the state of California looking for wood. But the next video, the next video, maybe a fuselage will appear out of thin air or something. Or I'll make one more cut. We'll see, we'll see. Be sure to subscribe, because maybe in the next video we'll go supersonic. Just a thought. <laughs>